Okay, we're here with actors generally. Hey guys. Why don't you start a little bit with your background and when you decided you wanted to become an actress and then take us through to today. Okay, perfect. Um, well, I actually didn't know that I wanted to be an actor at all until college because I'm, I'm kind of stage right. I, I don't know, like I love people, but I feel like unless I'm completely blinded by the stage lights, mm -hmm. I, I just feel nervous you know I feel like in theater they're just they're, they're paying and they're right there and they really have expectations and you got to make it worth their money so I didn't think I wanted to be an actor I thought maybe I wanted to be a lawyer or a teacher or something and then I went to the University of Virginia and um, to like make it like, it's such a long story but to make it like as cute and as, as compact as possible what I did is there were all these posters all over ground our campus for this, this film called The Loss of Life, mm -hmm. and it haunted me. I mean, they should have gotten like fines. There was so much graffiti, <laughs> and there was one outside my apartment. It was like every class. There was like The Loss of Life open auditions. Cause a lot of indie film shoots in Virginia just because of tax breaks and all this business. So I don't know whether it was a dare to myself, but I decided that I was going to audition. I went home. I had gotten this video camera from my ex-boyfriend mm -hmm. uh, for like Christmas because he knew I was kind of like interested in documentary stuff at the time. Used the video camera, recorded my like audition, and then I'd watch it back to see like what I was doing because I had not, no idea what acting was really. And then I, uh, you know, deleted it so there was no dirty footage of me like filming myself auditioning and practicing in my room. <laughs> went in, booked the audition, and. Apparently I booked it on the spot, but they didn't tell me until like an hour later. They closed the auditions down after that, and I got like the lead role, Sheila. It's my first role, Loss of Life. The footage has since been destroyed, and it was actually a really good film. And, um, I don't know, it was like this girl, and, and I had to get raped and all this stuff in it, so it was really like, super, you're in acting now. Right. And I kind of got the bug, because I, I love film crews, and I just love people that work on film. They're all really down to earth, mm -hmm. and... I was like, this is so contagious and so fun, and, and maybe I want to do this, you know? My parents were like, well, listen, if you get a degree, you do well in school, and we'll support it. We'll see. So they're really supportive. Graduated early, because UVA is very rigorous, and there's not a lot of time to play, so I was like, just get me out of here, get me to L.A. sooner. Uh, waited tables for six months in Virginia, where I'm from, Roanoke, and taught kindergarten during the day. And then I moved out to LA, drove out, didn't know a soul, lived with the roaches. Mm -hmm. it's awful. Ate rice and eggs every day because I was so poor. <laughs> and um, I don't know, I, I read a book by Judy Kerr called The Business uh, Acting is Everything. And I just started reading books on the business of acting because a lot of people move to LA and they think, oh, I'm going to be a star, I'm going to be famous, you know, I'm just going to walk down the street with lip gloss on and everybody's going to notice me. And it's like, mm -hmm. welcome to LA, everyone's gorgeous, you know? So I just started learning about the business of acting and I just really, I set like a seven year plan and I was like, you know, I'm going to see how things go for seven years. Like if I'm going seven years and I haven't booked anything, then maybe I need to go back and be a kindergarten teacher, you know, like maybe, maybe acting wasn't like the right thing for me. But it's been going really well. Yeah. I just hit my five-year mark in LA. And um, I mean, G General Hospital was such a breakout role for me. I got recast. Uh, I got the role of Maxie Jones. I temporarily replaced Kirsten Storms and went from temporary to permanent to temporary. But it was mm -hmm. really fun. And working on soaps is so amazing because you will not have a more challenging thing to do. I mean, it's, right. it's a normal show shoots six pages a day, maybe seven pages. We shoot 150 pages a day. 40 pages, I averaged about 35 to 40 pages a day of my own dialogue. And the cast was amazing. You get one take, and I don't, I just, I wouldn't trade that experience for the world because I learned so much. And yeah. I normally do comedy, but then I got to do a soap and I got to do all this crazy stuff. So it was just amazing, and, and now I'm here. Do you have, uh, now that you've done the melodramatic, I mean, you've yeah. cried for pretty much the entire year. Oh my gosh, on. cried all the time. Do you, <laughs> pretty much every day that you were on, you were crying for some reason yeah. or another. Do you, did that boost your confidence in the fact that you could do more dramatic stuff? Did you always have that confidence in your ability to do the dramatic, or were you more confident in your ability to do comedy? Well, that's an interesting question, because when I first started with The Loss of Life, it was a very dramatic role. So I thought, you know, like normal actor, you think you're going to do drama. Uh -huh. And then um, <laughs> I moved to L.A. and I was doing these casting director workshops where you take classes with casting directors and you kind of perform in front of them and then hopefully you build a relationship. And I remember I was doing this scene and I thought it was a dramatic scene. And she holds, the casting director holds me after the class and she was like, 
I just had a question for you, and I was like, okay. She's like, you were so funny. And I was like, what? Because I thought I was doing a dramatic scene. And she was like, oh, the whole time I kept looking at your resume and not understanding why you didn't have like your own, you know, comedy pilot. And I was like, really? So she was like, you're really funny. And I was like, I didn't know that because my family's so funny. I'm one of four. And we're all pretty smart, but like I am just not nearly as quick as the rest of my family. I mean, I always say like, Sitting around the dinner table with the Lily family was always so funny because they'd be like, stop, 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 stop. And five minutes later, I'm like, that one, got it. And they're like, Jen, that was, that was five jokes ago. And I was like, <laughs> and just fast the mashed potatoes, like whatever. It was mourn in my food. So I didn't know it was funny because my family is so funny. And so then I really started pursuing comedy and I got really comfortable in that. And I, then I was uncomfortable in drama. I was like, maybe since I was doing a dramatic scene and she said it was funny, like maybe I'm really bad at drama. So I put the soap and my manager and I had a good laugh and it was just crazy. So I do feel more confident in drama now. I mean, I really do think that if you can do soaps, you can do anything. Right. So. And now, what advice would you give to somebody who's just starting out in the business? You've been yeah. pretty busy the five years that you've been working. So you yeah. kind of were one of those people that they could say broken overnight, quote unquote, kind yeah. of. Yeah. You know, but what, what advice would you give to somebody who maybe is struggling now or? Yeah. Well, I think, first of all, if you're dreaming about, I'm going to say this to the camera, if you're dreaming about becoming an actor, I think you can do it. I mean, honestly, like, I'm from Roanoke, Virginia, and it's not the lost colony of Roanoke. It's the one you've never heard about. <laughs> it's very small. And I just think you can do anything if you put your mind to it, and you're smart, and you're practical about it, and you kind of set some goals. You can do it, and you have to know that times are going to be hard, and you can't book everything. I think if you book, I think if you book, I don't know, one out of every 20 yeah. auditions, you are like way ahead of the pack. So I just I think if anybody can do it. You just have to buy business of acting books and, and be really practical about it. And there are weeks where nothing happens and I feel like you have to have a buddy. You have to have like a buddy that you meet with and you're like, we're gonna set goals. And you have to have goals that are just like health goals, like I'm gonna drink more water, and then, and it's like make practical goals that you can do every single week, and start building your confidence, take classes, and I just think you can do it if you're practical, and you just save up some money, and just really commit to yourself, and commit to acting, I think anybody can do it. Cool, Jen, thank you so much for thank taking you. the time to do this, this is fantastic. Thank you, thank you guys so much.